So we are going to talk about a topic we've hit before and likely will hit again, but it is always nice to put out there. And that is, how do you get started real estate investing today? Between Anna and I, we have hundreds of units, 50 plus years of experience, and we are helping people get started all the time. So Anna, let's play a game of ping pong. We'll go back and forth maybe three times. What, what is some advice? You want to get started today. You have interest. You have no units. Let's assume you can qualify for a loan. Let's assume you have a down payment. But how do you get started? What's what's rule number one or step number one? Rule number one is make sure you know where you are financially and what your primary financial goal is over the next five years. Is it income? Is it growth and appreciation or is it asset preservation? If you've got a great job, your spouse maybe is working and has a great job and you're not worried about you know, layoffs and income, and you're willing to buy some properties that might not cash flow great for a couple of years, but they might have a lot of upside, um, then, then going after those properties that don't have a lot of cash flow and have great upside might be for you. But if you're saying, hey, I'm worried about my job, I need an extra $500 a month, don't be looking for properties that have growth and upside, but don't cash flow. You've got to focus on markets and properties that are going to give you the cash flow that you need. So that's the first thing is don't get the cart before the horse and st go start buying what you think Michael buys and Anna buys and other people buy. Know what your financial goal is, and then that's going to help you hone in on where should you target your first property purchase. Awesome. My first one's probably going to surprise you, but uh, thankfully I knew we were going to talk about this. So I thought ahead. Uh, <laughs> what is your mindset going in? I see a lot of people interested in real estate investing. The last couple of years have been hard for the first time investors. Yes, I, I think you have to have the mindset that you know a deal is out there. You didn't find one yes. today. Great. It's still out there. You didn't find one tomorrow. Great. You know, it's still out there. That's one of the things. It's one of my superpowers. It's you know, I, again, I think I shared with you through 2021, I wrote a hundred offers, got two counters, no deals on the MLS. Wow. My whole, my whole journey, one rental at a time is bought out of the MLS 2021, a yeah. hundred offers and nothing, but I was willing to do 101, 102. Right. I just have this natural belief. I think there are a lot of people that try it. They write two offers. They look for 35 days and they're like, see, I told you there's nothing out there. Yes. Yes. That's if you want the easy button and you want get rich quick and you want to feel like a real estate rock star, let me just tell you, this is a hard time to invest in real estate, but it's possible, but you're going to have to be patient and you're going to have to do the work. And so if you are committed, you know, there's a lot of people that are interested in real estate, then they find out it's not the easy button. It's not the get rich quick. You can't just write two offers and get two deals. When they find out that it's going to take some time, they, they're, you find that they're not committed. They're just interested. If you're committed to changing your financial future, you're committed to taking the long road and to slowly but surely create wealth through real estate, then you've got to have that mindset that this is not a fast and easy thing. This is something that I'm going to have to commit to. I'm going to have to spend time. I'm going to have to educate. And I'm going to have to be really patient to do what are only great deals. And that might be, like you said, the one in a hundred that you look at that actually works. So make a, make a commitment, not just an interest, and, and commit to yourself that you're going to be patient you're going to be resilient and you're just going to keep doing the work till you do find that right property for you. Love that. Love that. What do you got for number two? I would say if you're in a position to be able to do so, house hack, because there's still no better way to get into a property with very little money down than house hacking. So we talked about in video number three, you know, a, po a possibility of a single family home that maybe you want to rent later. Maybe you can get in with a new builder who buys down your rate and gets you in at 5%. Well, if you're going to own that home and and live in it, you might be able to get an FHA mortgage with three and a half percent down or a USDA mortgage with no money down um, or other home mortgages conventional with five percent down. And so if you don't have a lot of money down and you're willing to house hack either a single family house or my favorite, if you don't have a big family and you can do it, is to house hack a four unit like I did. And again, get in with very little down with a rate that may be bought down in some way. And that's going to allow you to live below your means for a while, get a property with very little money down, best interest rates you're going to get, and then you live in it for a year or two and then you move out. Yeah. House hacking is one of, you know, one of the rare regrets I have financially, right? I should have house hacked something at 20 in the Bay Area, fourplex. Yeah. 
Uh, I, you know, I'm personally not up for roommates, but there are people like Todd Baldwin and Spencer Cornelia, big friends, been on the channel who are not my thing, but a fourplex. I would have been, I would have been down for that. It's one of my regrets that I didn't do. Uh, yeah. Again, another expert on the channel, Dion from Dion talk. Uh, his, his, um, his cost of housing because he lives in a fourplex is negative 2,400. He is paid $2,400 to live in his fourplex because there's three tenants. It's just, awesome. it works. And yeah. uh, I agree with you. I think, I think that's a, a wonderful one where I'll go next is kind of where most people think I would go. And that is get a buy box. There is, Endless ways to buy, endless avenues, endless things. Most people get the shiny penny syndrome and they're all over the place. Get a buy box. I looked at one specific buy box, 93703, single family home, three or four bedroom, two baths, two car garage between, I want to say 17 and 2,300 square feet for three years. Yeah. That is less than 1% of my MSA or market. Right. That's what I looked at for, guess what? After about a year, half a year, I knew it better than anybody else. After a year, I was the man, right? And I could, I could find the great deals and I could create great deals. The beauty of doing the work consistently on a small set is not only do you learn it, but you learn where you could push and prod and get creative. And yeah. um, most people are not willing to do the work consistently. It's very frustrating. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a big one. The other thing that I would look at is see if you can find some properties with either an assumable rate mortgage um, that you can take over a payment. And that's definitely possible in commercial. It's something that I've been actually making multiple offers in the last couple of weeks were loan assumptions. And like so it. there is still properties out there that have a very low fixed rate debt. The last one we looked at was 3.75% interest only for seven years. Now we didn't get the property because we didn't want to put a million dollars down. Um, but you know, there, those deals are out there. So look for loan assumptions. And when you're searching, if you're looking for residential, you're on the MLS, you're on retail.com. A lot of people don't know you can actually put a keyword in your search. And so search for financing, um, seller, seller financing, assumable, search for those terms and see if you can find listings that the seller is saying, hey, I'm motivated and I'm offering seller financing or I have an assumable rate mortgage. That's a way to get in and still really be able to cash flow on a deal that if you had to go get your own new mortgage on today, you might not be able to. Yeah, I love that. And I guess the final one I put out there is, you know, you got to choose your heart. Right. Yeah. We're talking about with real estate investing. It's a 10 year journey. I've seen most people make meaningful progress in 10 years. Many of them earn financial freedom in 10 years. It took me 15. But again, mm -hmm. I think you sign up for 10. You're committed, not interested. Back to your point. Yeah. And uh, life gets really good. Life gets really good once you get to the other side of that. But the first 10 years are going to be slow. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to have some gotchas or some whoopses. Yeah just keep going. It's, it's, it's worth yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, I've got a couple more. I'd say Please. one is to be really conservative with your numbers. You know, this is a time when there's a lot of uncertainty, um, a lot of things changing, you know, taxes are going up, insurance is going up. Um, you could have rent controls in certain markets. And so there's a lot of headwinds against us. And so you've got to be really conservative in your numbers. Don't be afraid to let a lot of deals pass because they're just not good enough. Don't say, mm. I'm so desperate to find a deal that I'm yes. going to, I'm going to lower my vacancy rate that I'm using and I'm going to put in 2% instead of five or 10, right? Find out what the what the norms are for your area. So if, if property management is six or 10%, then use what it is. You know, if um, vacancy rate in your city is nine, like in Houston, put in nine, don't use five. So be really conservative on your numbers. And if deals still pencil out on a conservative basis, then you know that over the long term, that's probably going to be a really good deal. Um, don't neglect to put in property management. Even if you're going to self-manage it, you need to build in property management and vacancy and maintenance into your numbers. And if you're only positive cash flow because you've pulled those things out, that's not a good deal. So make sure you're really conservative. You build everything in so that if you ever don't want to self-manage your properties or they are going to need some maintenance and repairs or, you know, we have a recession and there's some vacancy, you're not in the negative and freaking out. You've already kind of built it into what you're doing. Yeah. Again, I, I, for, if you go back and watch my playlist or my content for two years, I talked about doing good or great deals because it was a hot market. Yeah. Good left the building 
second half of, of 2022. I do not accept good deals anymore. We are only doing great deals, conservative, yeah. underwritten, great deals. So uh, I love that. Absolutely. So do you I have would say one? too, yep. you know, I, think about partnering up, especially if you're just getting started or you, you find a deal, but you just don't have enough cash that you're willing to let go of because you need some reserves. You know, I recommend that you have some reserves, but talk about partnering with some other people. You don't have to do deals a hundred percent on your own. And it's actually one of my biggest regrets. So you say, you know, you regretted house hacking. I regret that I didn't start partnering up much sooner. I felt like I needed to do it all my own. I wanted a hundred percent ownership. Um, and I just didn't know any, you know, great partners and it kept me from partnering earlier on. Sometimes it's those bigger deals that you can actually get a better deal on, but you need to find somebody that's well aligned with you and consider partnering up with someone. So maybe you've got the time and that you've got the skills and they have the money that might be a great partnership, or maybe you've got some money, but you want to partner up with someone that has some, some experience in those deals. Um, look for some really good aligned people that you might be able to do some partnerships with. I love that. I love that. Again, um, it's all about where you're comfortable, where you're learning. Network, grow your network. You never stop networking. Try to meet two yeah. new people a week. Just, just, and never stop. It'll be amazing how fat your Rolodex is in, in a very short right. time. And keep learning. I think that's the last one. I'm sorry, I had three in a row, okay. but you nice. know, this is a time to really, really learn because you're going to have to be patient to only do great deals. And you're going to feel like sometimes you're twiddling your thumbs or this isn't going to work or it's not a good time. Keep learning so that you stay yes. motivated, so that you learn to not make the mistakes that a lot of you know people might make because they're just making you know guesses and investing in in mediocre deals. So use this time as you're looking at deals, as you're writing offers, to continue to learn. You know, tune into the channel, listen to our playlist, and educate yourself so that you continue to move forward and stay motivated until you find those right deals for you. Anna, you are amazing. You are so helpful to the audience at Thank One you. Rental at a Time. Where can people find you? You can find me here every Wednesday and on my playlist on your channel. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom. And you can find me on my website at reimom.com. Thank you so much. Thank you.